Testing. Okay. Oh, Bree, sorry for the delay. Can uh, can you hear me now? All right, finally. How about my desktop? Can you guys see my option view now? Okay, great. Sorry about the delay, everybody. Uh, using the new uh, new webinar format here and uh, at the get that all squared away. So I'm glad you're seeing it now. So uh, again, sorry for the delay. It'll be recorded for those of you that couldn't uh, uh, or people that have to leave early because of uh, the late start. But uh, basically what I wanted to do is spend some time uh, talking about option view uh, and how it can give you an edge uh, in modeling around earnings plays and basically kind of show you how we've been using it here in the office to really take advantage of some opportunities. Okay. Okay, so basically what I wanted to do is uh, we're kind of right in the middle of earnings season here. We're going to take a look at Google and uh, see what's going to happen uh, with that. The nice thing about Option View is uh, an important column uh, to have here is the earnings date. And uh, you can customize the Option View quotes display however you want to, but um, you can always just click on the uh, column heading here and hit the insert button on your keyboard to create a new column. And then you would just right click here and select earn date. And so this is going to show you when earnings are coming up. And the BMO is before the market opens. So the event uh, for Priceline is actually going to be on the 17th. After the market close, that means the actual event date for LinkedIn is going to be on February 5th. Okay. But before we get to that, look, let's look at Google. Now, an interesting thing, we've been looking at, at Google, and uh, they have Google L and Google, and we actually found that um, there tends to be a lot more. Uh, this DVO stands for uh, dollar volume of options traded on average, and that the DVO for Google L is actually a decent amount higher. So uh, maybe some more opportunities or better pricing uh, that you get in the options in, in Google L. So this is how I would look at doing an earnings play. It's actually one of the, the prime movers uh, on our uh, earnings module um, set to, uh, let me take a look at this again. And they're set to the announce after the market closed today. And double click on this and open up an options chain. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is just going to put on a, a straddle here. Not picking a direction, just thinking that it's going to uh, really significantly move. And then I would analyze this. Okay. So, what this information is giving me now uh, is going to show you after the announcement, you see the expected event model at T plus one, which is today plus one day, so tomorrow. And if you put the straddle on, this is what tomorrow is going to look like after all the volatility comes crashing out of the options. Okay. These lines here and here are showing where your break-evens are at. So it's it's showing 7% and 7% in either direction. These diamonds are showing where the uh, straddle is uh, priced. So it's pretty much right on right now. So this is depicting the move, where the market thinks the move is going to be in Google. Okay. These triangles down here, this red triangle and this green triangle, are showing on average where Google has moved over the past two years or past eight earnings seasons. So it's showing you that on average, if it's an up move, it moves to this range. And on average, if it's a down move, this is how far it goes down on average. Okay. So it really shows you some nice information on what the picture is going to look like after they announce tomorrow. Okay. Um, what I often, often do as well is, is if I'm doing an earnings play, I'll go to a price chart. I'll see where the level of volatility is at right now. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. I'll click on this E button here. This shows you the past earnings announcements and where the move has gone to on each of those days. And then with that straddle that I have modeled, I can actually click on this button here and show where your profit zone is going to be. Okay, so in order to put the straddle to be profitable after the announcement, Google's going to have to make a significant move up and a decent move down in order to be profitable. Okay. 
the other kind of neat thing you can do is I'm going to come back here and let's say that you wanted to pick a direction. Uh, I'm going to clear the trades out and start over again. If you wanted to pick a direction on on Google, you know, you could always come and do something like a a diagonal just to show you what it's going to look like here. Okay, so as long as it's an up move, you're going to be guaranteed to to make some kind of a a, a profit on this one. Okay, and then I can go again to my price chart if I want to and see what that looks like. So we need an up move, and this is the range where we're going to be profitable and then definitely profitable uh, no matter how high it goes but with a diagonal. Okay, uh, I'm going to jump over, back over the chat real quick and make sure uh, everybody can hear me okay. It looks like we're doing good. Okay, so that was the, uh, so Google is, you know, that's one of our prime movers in our earnings module, and uh, basically what our strategy says to do is to put a, a straddle on and that it's going to be a big move uh, in one direction or the other. Um, some other cool things that I wanted to show you um, that a lot of people are taking advantage of these days is taking advantage of the modeling uh, that OptionView does, and, and what that does is it's showing you that Volatility is going to be increasing on the options for any underlying as you get closer and closer to that earnings event. Um, and I've had a lot of success doing this with Priceline. Uh, some people in the office have had a lot of success with Amazon uh, just last week. Um, and we're not talking about going through earnings. We're talking about taking advantage of some uh, undervalued spreads. Uh, up into earnings. So, I mean, uh, it worked out with Amazon in that you were able to buy some close to at the money uh, calendars and uh, took them off uh, the day before earnings for about a 50% return on each side. There was one done on the call side and the put side. And I'm going to show you how we came to some of those trades. Um, let's take a look. Uh, we've got Chipotle is coming up here. So is LinkedIn. Let's look at Chipotle first. Um, Chipotle is kind of an interesting uh, candidate right now because of the situation it's in. I'm going to show you uh, a volatility chart and a price chart with it, and it is very clear you know, and predictable where volatility is going to go to uh, before earnings. And then, of course, you have the drop-off here. So this, is, this blue line is showing you the, uh, the implied volatility of all the options. Okay, so because of Chipotle's huge sell-off, we're at an unprecedented level of, of volatility right now. And what I use in Option View is I look at a two-year average of where volatility has been, and I can see these are percentiles right here. That based on where IV and uh, statistical volatility, uh, which is the red, is at right now, they're both in the 98 and 97 percentile. And I can tell you that the other, you know, two percent or three percent are, you know, right here. So it's uh, the, uh, a lot of a lot of volatility in in Chipotle right now, of course, because of the huge sell-off and everything that's been going on with them in the news. Um, so, but what you could do um, is you come into uh, Trade Finder here, and first, an important thing to do is to make sure you have your matrix defined the way you want to. Of course, we want to have this. Uh, weekly defined because that's where the event is taking place and if you're doing earnings plays you definitely want to make sure you have weeklies defined so that uh, you can take advantage of, of uh, when most of those events are going to be happening so you can see here that the volatility uh, is you know at the money is almost 90 here it is 90 right here and then you can see that you still have high volatility uh, going out here into the further out contracts Okay, so what you could do, and let me go back here and look again at the date. So Chipotle is announcing after the market closed tomorrow, so the event day is on the 3rd. Let's see if there are any opportunities to, to take advantage maybe of uh, uh, the ramp up in volatility just over the next uh, next day here. So another thing I want to point out is slippage. Slippage is important. I like to look at things with no slippage. What that means is that I'm going to get the market price. So if I was going to do a calendar right here, Option view is going to model that I'm actually going to be able to sell this for 2050 and buy this one for 2305. Okay. If you change slippage to small, it's going to say that you're going to get a little bit worse fill to moderate 
and then hit bid ask is the worst possible fill you could you could possibly get, which means you're you're buying at the ask and selling at the bid. So, and just to keep things you know realistic, sometimes I like to look at small uh, or moderate slippage. So let's just say I set slippage to small right now. Say I'm willing to give up a little bit in order to get in, into a position. So then I'll go to Trade Finder. Okay, come over here, choose Chipotle. Say what my target is, and I'm just going to click on these buttons here because Option View knows that this is the event date. This is when the announcement, uh, when all the activity is going to be happening, all the volatility is going to be coming out. Well, I don't want to go through that day. I want to just look for a trade that is maybe showing an undervalued spread right now that I can take advantage of over the next day. Okay. As far as strategies, I've got uh, just the horizontal debit spreads I'm looking at right now. You could look at diagonals if you wanted as well. Or a lot of people like strangles or straddles. Um, I like to look at the uh, debit spreads, the horizontals. Goals, I'm just using arbitrary 3,000 there. And then filters, um, I have some filters in here, but the biggest one is to make sure that there's open interest. So it's only going to look for things that have uh, ha has had at least one option traded in it. Okay, and filters, just kind of put a number in there so that uh, I'm not finding things that are way out there and have huge spreads in the bid and the ask. Okay, so now I'll hit go, and I'm, I'm ranking these based on expected return. Let's see if we have anything that comes up with, with Chipotle here. And then we'll look to LinkedIn, and we'll take a look at Priceline. Priceline's a little further out. Okay, so this is with small slippage, and we know there's open interest out there. And you can see right now, they're showing a net price on some of these spreads, the one at 417 uh, for 15 cents. There's one at, at 420 on the put side for 30 cents and 40 cents. But you can see what the expected return is on these based on my $3,000 investment. Okay, Going out there and getting some of these ones that are really cheap, sometimes it's really hard to get. The market makers will come in and, 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 and tighten up everything so that they get more on par, but you can really sometimes find some advantages and get some really decent priced uh, horizontals here. And when things line up, again, you're going to be able to capture that return. But let's say we're conservative here. We want to look at something. Um, let's look at the 410. Okay, and I'm going to send this trade to the matrix. And right away, it's going to come into the matrix here. You can see this little arrow. It'll bring me down to it. Okay, so we're looking at this 410. It's looking at the one expired this week and then two weeks out. Okay, it's trying to maximize. Trade Finder will always try to maximize your uh, the capital you're allotting to, to put on the trade. So now I'm going to analyze this. Okay, and it's anticipating that this is what the T plus 2 line is highlighted here. So this is showing you what it's going to look like after the announcement. What we're interested in is capturing the vol spike over the next two days. So basically what's happened is it's saying, let's go back to the matrix real quick. What it's saying here is that this is undervalued. So this is going to be increasing over the next day and a half here. Okay, and this will increase as well, but this is going to increase. And it's saying that it's, you know, this is going to increase more, which is going to bring you to these lines here. Okay, so basically what we're saying, what, what Option View is, is showing us right now with the horizontal skew modeling that we're using is that you could potentially be at this line tomorrow and be able to get out with some kind of a, a, of a return, potentially. Let me change this to yield real quick. I'm at, at profit loss. I'll change this to yield. So potentially you could be returning about 50%. And this was done last week on Amazon was a good one. Now it doesn't always work out for all of the underlines. Some of them have different characteristics during different times of the uh, year, uh, seasonality and the earnings and things like that. So, But with Option B, you can go back and back test any of this stuff uh, and You'll know, Option View remembers when earnings are, and you can back test the event, and then you can step through time and see how it would have worked out. So potentially between now and then, if, if things work according to the modeling, that that back contract that we're long is going to increase in value more so than the front weekly is going to, and it's going to bring you up to a, a nice level where you could potentially make, you know, even if you're making 20%, 30%, it doesn't meet the full maximum 50% uh, here. It's still a fantastic opportunity to uh, to get into something and 
and, and take advantage of that, that ramp up in volatility. So that's how, and you can see, it cost me 3000 to put this on before. Someone probably on the webinar went and bought it already and took advantage of it. So now the price is at $3,400. Um, just kidding about that. But you can see how they, they, they do fluctuate a lot, around a lot. So what we'll be doing is we'll be running these kind of trade finders three, four days uh, in advance of an earnings announcement and try to jump on the opportunities. Okay, so if you were able to get filled at three thousand uh, on this trade or whatever the spread was for this one, um, it's now currently trading at four hundred dollars higher than our initial three thousand was. Okay, so let's clear this one and close out of Chipotle. And uh, let's actually look at a uh, before we leave Chipotle. Let's look at a straddle on this one just to see where the option market is pricing this at. Okay, I'm going to clear the trades on here. Okay, so based on what uh, the straddle is saying right here, um, a straddle at the money straddle right now, you'd have to break past 9% or have to gap up more than 8% in order to make money on an at the money straddle right now. Because we're looking at this T plus 2 line, this is, would be today. And then, boom, after volatility comes crashing out of it, you're going to need to be in this area or this area in order for the straddle to be profitable. Okay, I'm going to try to jump over here and see if there's any questions coming up here. Okay, doesn't look like there's anything uh, yet. Okay, let's do the same thing. Uh, it's going to be a little further out. We're going to look at uh, uh, price uh, LinkedIn, sorry, and LinkedIn's uh, after the market close on the fourth, and so the event date is on the fifth. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a matrix for this one. Okay, this is something I was looking at earlier, just testing to see if there are any opportunities in it this morning. Uh, so now I cleared that out. I'm going to go to Trade Finder. Okay, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select the asset I'm highlighted on now in the with the uh, uh, quotes display and in the matrix and it's important to open up a matrix before you run trade finder okay my targets I'm going to click on these buttons which are going to pull in the current information and it's looking at the event date which is the fifth well we don't want to look at the event date we want to look at the day before because we're going to try to take advantage of uh, some mispricing or the opportunity to find uh, something that's going to ramp up in value before now and uh, the fourth horizontal double spreads. Same goal, using 3,000, same filters, and going to go ahead and hit go here. Oh, we got to go and look and see what slippage was at. That's important. Okay, so now I've got some really nice things coming up. Before we go forward, let me come back here real quick and look at slippage. Okay, still slippage set to small. So this is saying that even though, even giving up a little bit to get into these, this is what it is showing up as. So we've got some nice ones at 230. You can see it's at 202 right now. Um, I, like to, I like to find some closer to the money sometimes just because I think that they have a better chance of developing. Um, 195 put this looks like a fantastic one okay it's trading at 202 this is on the put side the 195 I'm gonna send this to the matrix actually let's take a look at analyze it first so you can actually analyze it from right here so I'm gonna look at this one I'm gonna analyze it okay let's take a look at another one you could do right at the 200 put I'm gonna analyze that one okay you can actually superimpose them over each other if you wanted to but I really prefer to go and take it to the matrix. And let's look at that 195 again and send this trade to the matrix. And the reason it was showing those lines like that is because it's only looking at my target date. So it's only looking at things up until uh, the fourth, not going past that. So here's the 195 that we're looking at. Okay, this is the capital right around 3,000 it would cost to put this on. I'm going to analyze this. And so you can see some fantastic modeling that Option View is doing and, and anticipating that this is really an undervalued spread right now and that it's going to ramp up in value. 
Okay. You know, it's showing you potentially, you know, let's look at uh, tomorrow. It's saying that this is potentially where the volatility could cause this spread to be worth basically 100% more than it is right now. Okay. Now I have found that some that sometimes it's it's over exaggerating what the uh, potential return is going to be, but putting these on and getting out for an extra 50%, 40%, 30%, if you can capture even you know half of what this one is saying, it's going to be a fantastic trade. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll get some of these uh, kind of free money trades is what we call them, and then I'll put a, a, a trade on to go through earnings with the money that I've been able to capture from doing these calendars or horizontal debits into and up to the uh, the day before the announcement. Okay, so that's LinkedIn. And again, like I said, you're going to find some ones uh, that can be phenomenal. And I've even been looking at this with a little bit of slippage. Um, but it, I have found that when you start getting too far away from the at the money, um, they're less liquid. Um, once you put these on, uh, it's going to be hard to get out. You might be stuck going through um, uh, if you don't uh, take it down or, or you know, get out with uh, with profit before. And again, it's because of the liquidity that far out. So um, we found that. Uh, but if you're looking for a, a jump play in one way, a direction or the other, you can get in on that jump play and play, you know, the put side or the call side and get in uh, at a really, really low price. Okay, so that is uh, LinkedIn. Let's take a look at Priceline. I've had a lot of luck uh, with Priceline in past earnings seasons where I was doing these over and over again about a week to nine days before the announcement. Make sure I clear the clear the trades here. And so actually before we go forward, let's say take a look at the, uh, the date we're looking at here in Priceline. Priceline is the 17th. Okay, so we're quite a ways away from the uh, the announcement but it is before the market opens so the 16th is the date we're going to want to use okay let me open up a matrix price line again and then I'm going to double check and see where my slippage is at and I set this small so we're anticipating that we're not going to get the uh, uh, the market price we're going to pay a little bit more I'm going to trade finder here and again we're going to pick LinkedIn okay pull in all the current information and I'm going to change the date to the 16th. I'm going to clear my results from the uh, LinkedIn and hit go on this one. And now it's looking at all the combinations of horizontal debit spreads that I have defined in my matrix. Price line's a pretty big underline. You can see the symbols that I have coming in right now because uh, I have such a, a largely defined options chain for, for price line. And again, this is early, so we're way ahead of the curve here. If you wanted to put some, one of these on, and it's saying this is what the expected return is the day before earnings on some of these. Okay, already, and again, we're using $3,000 for capital, so you can see, you know, here's it's showing 50% return uh, on these guys. And if it develops sooner, you can always take, take it off and, and, and do it again. Okay. So let me go ahead and just send this one to the matrix. And we'll find it. This one's pretty far out of the money. That's really far away. Okay. And let's just see. There is volume out here. Someone bought 40 today. Let me go ahead and look at open interest. And there is open interest out here. So this may be something you want to consider. When you get out here and look at things that have there's only you know one option sold on it or five. But this is decent. I mean, you could get some, uh, there's definitely some liquidity here. So I'm going to go ahead and analyze this one. Okay. And I'm actually going to change a date. There's the 16th. Okay. Here's the 15th. Okay. So this one doesn't look like there's that much uh, opportunity. And the reason it's giving me such a high expected return is because of our standard deviations down here and how much time there is out into the future. So it's saying that if price line moves up, um, and let's just click on the 15th here. So we're two days, two full days before the actual event. It's showing that if price moves up to any of these ranges, this is where you're going to be. And then the 17th, boom, 
if you're anywhere in this range after the announcement, this is where your spread would be then. Okay, so let's clear these trades and go and see if we can find another one in Priceline. And again, anybody that has access to Option View can use this tool and, and, and find these potential candidates here. Um, again, um, you can actually use Backtrader and go back in time to the past, you know, however far you want to go back and look at earnings announcements and run Trade Finder and use this modeling to find these opportunities and see how they would have actually played out. Um, you'll find different underlines tend to work and different underlines tend to, you know, uh, not produce uh, the same results. But uh, that's kind of the beauty of being able to go back in time and, and see uh, what could happen. So that was a really far out of the money one. Let's find one that's close to the money. Uh, 950 is kind of close. 1300, 1260. Let's go down here a little further. Okay, we're getting pretty low on the expected returns here. And again, there's always going to be a sweet spot with different uh, underlines as well. You know, I these are already showing up here, and price lines are you know two and a half weeks out. Um, if you wanted to wait a few you know a few more days and come back in here and keep running it, and keep looking for some, you're going to find some some different opportunities. Let's find one on the puts here. Here's one at 9:30, showing a 30 uh, basically a 30 percent. 35% return, and I'm going to send that one to the matrix, and we'll take a look and see what this one looks like. And here it is down down here, out in the February and the Feb 27th. Analyze this one. Okay, and so now this is where you can start to see some of the, where some of the return potential is. Okay. So basically, on the 16th, the price line was at this price right now today. It's saying your P&L would be Five ninety nine or about twenty percent. I'm gonna clear those trades. Close and then let's uh, take a look at exactly what Option is doing. And we'll go to LinkedIn again and we'll open up a matrix here. Okay, and so really what's happening I'm, I'm going to click on this model button here this is where we're looking at slippage but now i'm going to click on volatility and so this is what's really happening behind the scenes here and you have access to look at this as well with option view is it's looking at the future event date is february 5th okay and it's showing you that there is going to be a volatility crush so i'm going to clear this and this is where volatility the volatility cone is at right now okay and you can see right here this is where linkedin's current MIV or midpoint of the implied volatility is right now. This is where it is in the next week out and so forth. So that's where this cone comes in. Okay. So now in order to model what it's going to look like exactly after the event date is I would flatten the curve by hitting this button and that's where it's coming up with the numbers and the modeling that we're using. So after earnings you can see that it comes down to the bottom of the cone. Okay. And let me show you the volatility chart for LinkedIn. Okay. And you can see I've got the earnings of date, uh, event dates here with these blue triangles. You can see that no matter what the move is, volatility peaks and then drops like a rock, basically. Okay. And you can see we're reaching this point up here again. Okay. You can see the percentile, the two year percentile. So, IV is really high for LinkedIn right now, even higher than some of these previous announcements. That's just because of the volatility in the market in general right now. Okay, I'm going to go over to the chat and see if anybody's got any questions or anything like that. And then go ahead and chat if anybody wants me to take a look at anything. Um, the, let me close this here. So this is how you would model different things in option view. Okay. If you wanted to just find a, you know, uh, a potential trade to put on, I'm going to clear this, these out here. 
And you could use Trade Finder to find something going through the earnings announcement if you wanted to as well. Okay, so let's just say we're going to look at LinkedIn again here. And we're going to actually go to the earnings date. And let's just look at straddles and strangles. And clear the previous results and hit go on this one. Okay, and so what you're doing here is you're trying to find some decent trades that are maximizing your capital that you're providing. Okay, now the expected return for this one is 290. Let's take a look at it, send it to the matrix. Okay, and it's finding something that's pretty far out here. Let's go ahead and go here and go here. So it's finding that we're buying three of these. And uh, let me see where the other, let's analyze it. Okay. So we're looking at the event date, and it's got some pretty far out there options, as you can see. But basically what it's trying to do is it's trying to maximize your capital and give you the best, you know, ba really bang for your buck and, and finding the uh, some things that might be uh, priced to your favor. Again, a nice kind of thing you can do is you can take a look at a couple of them. So it's looking at all strangles here. Um, you can look at this one, analyze it, okay, and then you could highlight another one. Again, I, like I said, again, I prefer to actually send the trade to the matrix and, and then look at it that way. And then you can also adjust the sizes. Um, sometimes when I'm doing horizontals, I'll combine a couple of them together uh, to put a, a trade on to try to capture free money and then also as a maybe a, a play to go through the announcement. Okay, I got a question here. All right, which version of Option View do you need for the Toolful Trade Finder? For any any version of Option View, if you have Option View or subscription, your Trade Finder comes with it. Um, you know the basic essentials uh, package, which is ninety nine dollars a month. You'll have Trade Finder, you'll have Back Trader, so you can back test this. You can even even if you didn't have an account with Thinkorswim or Interactive Brokers, with which you can get that live data into Option View if you have accounts with them. Um, but you can run this uh, with 30 minute delayed data. It's going to produce, you know, um, results or draw your attention to uh, spreads that are, are, are undervalued, really, is what you're looking for. Um, you can back test this. But like I said, again, any, as long as you have Option View, um, a subscription trade finder is part of it. Okay. Um, the other thing uh, I'll draw your attention to down here is uh, basically we have an earnings module. Okay, this is where a lot of our uh, candidates come from. We have uh, E primes, E overs, pairs, echoes, and runners. Runners uh, are a category where um, after they announce, no matter where they gap to, they tend to run a certain percentage. You can take advantage of that in a number of different ways: um, buying a call or buying a, a put, depending on, on which way it gaps, of course. Uh, Echoes is uh, kind of looking at one company and saying whatever this company does, this company is going to uh, has a strong potential or has historically because all of these are test over the past two years. Uh, basically, it's back tested strategies giving you these candidates uh, uh, based on the results of how they performed uh, with these strategies of the past two years or past eight earning seasons. Um, Echoes is like I said again, it's a company that's announced. You watch what happens with that company and if it makes a move of this percentage or higher in this direction this company is going to do the same thing. Uh, E-overs, uh, that's basically saying that this is a stock that um, doesn't tend to move very much. So you're going to do a non-directional play by a calendar at the money and you're just going to capture the volatility because it's only going to move up one or two percent or down one or two percent. Okay, of course these are based on historic, historical results so they're not always going to work out. Facebook for as uh, well since they've been uh, around trading options um, has been on our list as a non mover well clearly it did not work out this past season because Facebook really pops the upside um, so uh, 
you're going to pick and choose which of these candidates you're going to play. This is just looking at back-tested results. It's not taking into account any of the fundamentals that are going on with the companies right now. So but the nice thing about it is it does draw your attention to all of these uh, uh, potential potential plays. E-Primes, uh, I just talked about that was the, uh, like Google right now is a prime mover on our list. It's going to, it tends to move really big. Um, and then the pairs, uh, these are one of my favorites. The pairs are actually, Visa and MasterCard is our most popular one um, that we, we talk about because it's, it's very clear. But you can uh, basically put a straddle on MasterCard if Visa is going to announce because they tend to move in the same direction. Okay, you could also play that as a runner, so to speak, in that if uh, Visa comes out and they have really good earnings, you could the next morning go ahead and get on a, a MasterCard bull spread or call and just think that it's going to run in the same direction. But these are pairs, so they basically tie a lot of companies together that uh, are usually in the same industry. But these are my favorite to play because of the low risk involved. If you were to put a straddle on MasterCard and Visa was going to announce the only risk you're really taking is a day of theta and commissions if it doesn't uh, doesn't pan out to, or, or really move. You don't have to worry about a big volatility crush uh, in these. Uh, so that's why I like, like the pairs. Um, just to show you what the earnings module looks like is if you came to import earnings plays, you're actually prompted every Monday um, for the earnings plays because it runs the algorithm over the weekend and then you could say go and remove candidates that no longer qualify and then bring in new ones you can you know set all of these parameters you want this is the default setting right here but you could say I want to make sure that they have been profitable at least four times five times six times I want my minimum stock uh, that for candidates to be fifty dollars or higher or only ten dollars and minimum DVO this means the do daily uh, dollar volume options traded on average in its terms of thousands so it's saying if this option if this underline doesn't trade $120,000 worth of options on a regular basis I'm not interested in looking at it okay these quality ratings are all based on returns so this is saying that this has returned on average over the past two years 26 percent this one's 20 percent 22%, 50%, and this actually is the percentage that this that this stock runs in that direction. So let's say you were looking at Fossil, for instance, and it was a runner. You would look at where it, where it gaps to, and you could calculate that it's going to run 4.5% further in that direction, or whether it gaps up or down, it's going to run 4.5% in either direction. And so you can you can set that down to 3% or you can set it up to 6% and pull in candidates for that. Okay, I'm going to open it up for any more questions or if anybody wants me to look at anything like that. I apologize for the uh, technical difficulties and delays we had this morning, but um, you know maybe I can do another one uh, for anybody that wasn't able to make it. And... Uh, I love talking about this stuff. It's exciting. It's fun. Uh, fun time of the year to uh, uh, trade options and look at earnings plays and really try to take advantage of, of, of the volatility ramp up we have and the, uh, the mispricing, so to speak, in, in, in the spreads and um, the different options chains that you can find. And that option view will quickly bring your attention to. Um, like I said, again, we are running these uh, trade finders throughout the day on different underlines all the time. Uh, one other thing I'll show you before I let everybody go is you can uh, always find out more information um, at uh, at our our, our website. Um, let me. I wanted to take you to. Uh, to uh, more information optionview.com. And if you click on the trading tab, um, and let me go back to option view here. And if you have option view, you can do this too. Go to help. Uh, and go to our company homepage here, okay, and you go to trading, and you can learn more about the earnings module here. There's a couple of videos that I've done there. If you click on support and go to helpful how-to videos, um, option view essentials, there's a lot of other videos you can watch. Here's another one I did uh, a couple of years ago, um, but lots of other uh, videos that you can you can check out.
and watch. And uh, I'll go ahead and end the meeting now. And I thank everybody for coming. Hopefully this was helpful. And uh, uh, good luck trading out there.